Hello again, I am Blunty, and this right here may very well be among the best, if not the very best, Xbox third-party controller I have ever laid hands on, with one exception. There's something about this that I really, really don't like that I wish would not have been the case, but it is the case, and that means... Uh, it's it's not my favorite controller. It's not going to be one I'm going to be using very frequently, and it is um, well, it's it's a kind of important thing that's that's missing from this controller. It will, however, remain an excellent choice for very many people out there. It is really quite good and very reasonably priced, and I um I do recommend it, uh, even though I won't be using it that often, which is um. A weird thing to say at the start of a review, so let's start at the beginning and see how we got there. This is the GameSir G7 SE. It is the world's first licensed Xbox controller featuring Hall Effect thumbsticks. Now, there have been other Xbox controllers with Hall Effect sensors in them, like Microsoft's own Elite Controller Series 2, but that controller, bafflingly considering Microsoft sell it as a premium version of their controllers at a very premium price, does not have Hall Effect sticks at all, only Hall Effect triggers. While the G7 SE here has both Hall Effect thumbsticks and Hall Effect triggers and sells for a hell of a lot less than the Elite Controller series. <laughs> And if you don't know what Hall Effect the heck is, short version. It uses contactless magnetics instead of physical electrical connections to measure movements in the sticks and triggers. The benefit of this is increased consistent precision for a longer useful lifetime and that most infamous of controller fail points, which has infested Nintendo, Sony and Xbox's first party sticks, Stick Drift. Now, how common stick drift actually is has been overplayed a little bit. It's not quite as common as online screeching would have you believe. Only unhappy people yell about things online after all, while happy gamers just, well, they keep gaming and don't scream about things as, as, as much. Which is why it might seem common that stick drift is a massive issue, but it is less common than you might think it is. Anyway, I still like and really want Hall Effect sensors in my sticks in my controllers for the other benefits of precision and durability, both things I really want in something like a controller. The G7 SE here is officially Xbox licensed, and of course, that means it's fully compatible with Xbox Series X, Series S, Xbox One, and Windows 10, and Windows 11, yada, yada, yada. So, as we unbox it, we find my first minor disappointment. The cable is not super awesome. It's way stiffer and more inflexible than I would personally prefer from my cables when it comes to things I have to hold and move around and perhaps have the cable, you know, drape across my lap or whatever. But that annoyance is small potatoes compared to the fact that they've done the really, really annoying thing of deeply recessing the USB-C connector, thus almost entirely eliminating the point of a universal connector, that being it's universal, because they've made it so only their very own cables are guaranteed to fit all the way down into this device and work properly. I've seen this on keyboards, I've seen this on mice, I've seen this on headphones, on other controllers, and I really wanted to friggin' stop. It is so obnoxious, so consumer hostile, it needs to stop. It's just crappy, and it's bad design. And that will tell you they reset it so deeply so it doesn't come unplugged very easily, but if you're gonna do that, just use a proprietary connector and be honest about it, because it may as well be proprietary at this point. No, you want to sell your device and say you've got USB-C on there so people think it's a universal connector. Hiss off with that. It's dishonest. Now, that little rant out of the way, the rest of the controller presents very, very nicely. The layout is, of course, very standard Xbox. The spacing of everything feels basically transparently the same as a first-party controller, with the exception of the function buttons, which have moved up a bit, while the Xbox button itself has moved down a bit to make room for an LED light. There's a couple of near-flush-mounted back paddles, which include a hard switch for something I'd like on all controllers with back buttons from now on. The switch physically locks the back paddle from moving, preventing accidental activation when you don't want to use back paddles or don't like back paddles at all, but still like the rest of the controller. And it physically completely stops the button from moving at all. So it doesn't even feel weird if you squeeze the controller and, you know, accidentally press a button that you might not be using at all. And as someone who rarely wants or uses back paddles, but in just a few games, I do really like using them. 
This option is something I really like. Best of both worlds. On the front, you might have spotted an additional button. It's labeled M, and it is for operating a few of the additional features. Mainly, you'll be using it as a shift button to allow the D-pad to control both volume and game versus voice chat mix for the onboard audio output. The audio output also includes a very nice little mic mute button right next to the audio jack, so that's very nice too. The sticks themselves feel sprung ever so slightly heavier than a first party Xbox controller and they move very smoothly, feel very precise. And I'll come back to precision in a minute. There's, there's more to say on that, but we'll have to wait for a bit. They do feel noticeably different to me in hand because they're ever so slightly shallower than first party sticks, which I know, I know it doesn't look like much on camera when I've got it side by side like this, but I'm telling you, I noticed it instantly in the feel as soon as I picked it up and started using it something felt different. How sensitive you are to something like that may vary and to be honest it wasn't unpleasant or bad or anything it's just something I noticed immediately and had to double check. And yes for those of you about to comment it is clearly time to clean the seams of that grubby first party Xbox controller and I'm gonna do that as soon as this video is done because yeah ooh, <laughs> I think I might be overdue to clean that. I like white controllers but this is the price we pay. The grub shows up. Ugh. Speaking of potential grime traps, the G7SC has nice molded textures on the triggers, on the shoulder buttons, and on the back grips, which provides a pleasant feel, but is just a little slipperier than a standard Xbox controller. The face buttons, similar to the sticks, are very slightly firmer than the Xbox default. They feel solid, there's no lateral wiggle or anything, and the tactility is solid. Very nice buttons. The D-pad is softer and doesn't have the harsh clickiness of the Xbox default pad, much closer in feel to the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller's D-pad, which is a good thing in my opinion because that is a fairly decent D-pad. The shoulder buttons are very similar in feel to the face buttons in activation and tactility, very pleasant and solid feeling, no worries there. The triggers themselves are actually slightly lighter sprung than the Xbox defaults, but have a good travel and feel smooth and clean. And in game they feel very responsive and very precise as you might imagine from Hall Effect sensors. And coming back to those sticks, they do have a nice broad and precise range. They have a solid click in when pressed and the grip on the recessed and rimmed caps feels pretty secure. Not the best feeling caps I've ever used, but no complaints. One final hardware trick, it has a magnetically attached front faceplate, allowing you to easily customize it with paints or whatever they say. Although they don't appear to have a listing on Amazon for just the faceplate, uh, which is a weird choice to make if you're selling a controller with a replaceable faceplate, but don't actually sell replacement faceplates. Um, why? <laughs> Now then, it's about time I mention that one thing that means I simply will not be using this controller as my daily driver no matter how much I like everything else about it and how many nice things I've said about it so far. And you might have guessed, seeing as that it comes with one, and I showed it to you right at the start of the video. Yeah, this controller, it's wired only. That's a deal breaker for me when it comes to ergonomic comfort. I grew up when wired controllers were literally all there was. But then when the seventh console generation rocked up and suddenly wireless controllers were not only common, but first party and in the box as the default option, well, I never wanted to go back to wired ever again, thank you very much. I do tend to keep a wired controller on hand for testing purposes, or in the rare game on PC where I main keyboard and mouse but want a controller for very specific parts of game mechanics, one example is Cyberpunk 2077, where driving with a keyboard and mouse is miserable, but driving with a controller is far better. So in a couple of playthroughs I've done in that game, I've had a wired controller sitting on my desk ready and hooked up so I can quickly pick it up and drive with it and put it back down again when I'm done driving. Whereas trying to do that with a wireless controller, well, they turn off automatically if you don't use them for a while. So I'd have to pick up the controller, turn it on, wait for it to sync and then drive. And that's not very handy. So that's why I need a wired controller for that kind of situation. But that's not something I do very often. But in any case, the G7SC will do that for me and it will be my go-to wired controller when and if I ever need a wired controller. But there is no way I want to deal with a wire full time in my gaming. Thank you very much. We're over that. We're beyond it. We're past it. I am not going back to those days. <laughs> but finally, we come to the software, which frankly is unusually good. Almost every piece of support software for a controller or any accessory of this kind, really from a third party I've ever used has been just kind of crap or bare minimum or just kind of jank or whatever. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. This though, good. And right off the bat, for a start, rather smartly, 
everything in this software is navigatable with the controller itself. You don't have to put the controller down and reach for your mouse to start fiddling with the settings on your controller like you do with every other piece of software I've ever had to do custom things with controllers. It's such an obvious thing, but bewilderingly, nobody else seems to do it, or at least nobody I've come across seems to do it. But here, it just, it just works. And the software's UI itself is all very clean, very clear, and very easy to use. You can save three custom profiles, and once these are saved to the controller, you can switch between them easily without the software, just using a combo hot button thingy. You've got complete button remapping available, complete control over the stick's sensitivity and range, and live feedback the whole time. You can swap the stick and D-pad functionality. You can lock the diagonals on the D-pad, and as you can see, sensitivity and accuracy is quite superb. And if you're some kind of sociopath, you can even kill the dead zone on the sticks entirely. So even thinking about placing your thumb on the stick will activate input. It's crazy sensitive when you turn it all the way down. Pointlessly sensitive, really. Not super useful, but kind of neat. You can drop below the standard setting as well as increasing the dead zone, which is something else I've not seen in a lot of other sticks with customizable dead zones. You can do similar things with the triggers, full control over activation point where the full range stops. You can even turn them into faux hair triggers. While well, physically, they can still move through their full range. You can set it up so any input past a level where you set as a minimum range of input. Before that, it will ignore any input completely. So if you accidentally sort of brush against it, it won't trigger your hair trigger thing. But then once you do go past your, your preset you know, preference, it will bam, instantly go full range and act like a hair trigger. This is the best implementation of this kind of uh, compromised feature between you know, full range and hair trigger kind of combo use that I've ever used outside of physically limiting the uh, you know, trigger itself to a hair trigger. And all of this is capped off with a handy little visual feedback test page so you can see any customizations you've made reflected visually and instantly as you use the controller. It really is far, far better software than I expected based on past experiences with such things, as I said. And better yet, it's even not some weirdo, dodgy download, unsigned piece of Windows thing. It, it, it just lives right there on the official Microsoft Store right in Windows. Which also means you can use automatic updates for it if you like, so you can always stay updated. And of course the software also functions as a firmware update tool for the controller itself. If this controller was just wireless, I would consider it superb. I would genuinely move over to it as my daily driver, but being slaved to a cable is a complete deal breaker for me. And that means I can't call it superb, I can just call it pretty good. But if the cable is not a deal breaker for you, or you, like me, do have the occasional use for a wired controller to be on hand, this is now the controller I would recommend. And at the time of publication, it's priced at just under 45 American smackaroonies, so not bad value either. But if you want a wireless controller with Hall Effect sticks and Hall Effect triggers and a bunch of the other stuff I liked about this controller, frankly, uh, for PC at least, I still recommend the Gillikit King Kong 2 Pro controller. It is a switch layout stick, which is a bit of a pain in the ass on Windows a lot of the times, but it does work on PC. And you can watch my review of that linked here or in the down below. Thank you very much for your time. Hopefully this has been useful and informative. I am Blunty, and thank you, as always, to the patrons scrolling up above there with their above and beyond support. I'll catch you next time.